Yeah. Hair flip. Yeah, I'm a badass bitch. I don't like it. Hair flip, yeah. Oh my god. So you guys should be happy. Oh my goodness. Hair flip. Anyways, hair flip. And hair flipping on these toes. Hi. Hello everyone and welcome back to your boy Sean Davey Way Show. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe on the way in. Tap that bell if you would like to be notified of all of our future content. Today I bring you a surviving on Tim Norman. He is from the very successful show Welcome to Sweetie Pies that premiered on OWN Network owned and produced by Oprah Winfrey. The legendary Robbie Montgomery was given a chance to showcase her family and how they get down in their restaurants. The great soul food that has been made from a family recipe that Robbie decided to place in her restaurants to show some type of homage to her ancestors, more so of her family, her mother and her mother's mother. And it just went from their successful restaurant that spurred into three restaurants. So. Let's jump right into it. Welcome to Sweetie Pies is an American reality television series starring the family of former Iket Robbie Montgomery and also focuses on the running of their collection of soul food restaurants, Sweetie Pies. The series premiered on October 15th, 2011 and ended on June 9th, 2018 on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Robbie Montgomery began her career in the 1960s as an Ikeette. The Ikeette was the backing group of soul duo sensation Ike and Tina Turner. After her lung collapsed and she could no longer sing, Robbie took her mother's soul food recipes and created Sweetie Pies, St. Louis's soul food restaurant run by Miss Robbie and her family. With two locations, Miss Robbie is preparing to open a third restaurant with the help of her son and business partner, Tim. While Tim and his fiance, Janae, tend to their newborn son and plan their wedding. Miss Robbie, who has never been married, continues to look for love at the age of 71, all while keeping the family in line, especially her nephew, Lil Charles. Welcome to Sweetie Pies follows the Montgomery family as they struggle with the demands and expanding of their family-owned business and creating a legacy to pass on to future generations. Welcome to Sweetie Pies premiered on Oprah Winfrey Network on October 15th, 2011. The series went on hiatus after the Windsor finale on December 3rd, 2011 and resumed with new episodes from March 31st, 2012 until June 2nd, 2012. The first season consists of the total of 18 episodes beginning July 14th, 2012 and continuing until the second season premiered. Oprah Winfrey Network aired two episodes of Welcome to Sweetie Pies an Extra Slice every Saturday featuring never before seen moments from season one. On April 5th, 2012, Owned announced that Welcome to Sweetie Pies was renewed for a second season. Season two aired weekly on OWN September 15th, 2012 until December 15th, 2012. Season three of Sweetie Pies premiered on July 27th, 2013, premiering with the highest rated episode of the series history. On April 14th, 2018, OWN announced that the series will end after the ninth season. The ninth and final season premiered May 1st, 2018. On March 14th, 2016, frequent cast member Andre Montgomery was slain in a shooting in St. Louis. Andre Jr. was Robbie Montgomery's grandson and was the subject of numerous episodes which focused on his move from Texas to the St. Louis area. Struggles in school, as well as a visit to the grave of his father, Andre Montgomery Sr., on August 18th, 2020, Montgomery's son, Tim Norman, who was also a frequent cast member, was arrested in Mississippi and charged for his alleged role in the murder for hire plot that resulted in the death of Montgomery's grandson in 2016. It was reported that Tim, who was facing federal charges, was proven to have become the sole beneficiary of Andre Jr.'s estate in 2014. 
recruited a Memphis exotic dancer named Terika Ellis and others to assist in the murder plot. In 2022, Ellis and two other co-conspirators would plead guilty to conspiracy to commit murder. Norman's murder trial began on September 6, 2022, and on September 16th, a jury convicted Norman on two counts of murder for hire and one charge of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Before we get into Tim and Andre, I think there are other things that need to be expressed before we do. Starting off with the show, Welcome to Sweetie Pies was a great idea. I think that Oprah Winfrey Network definitely gave Robbie Montgomery and her family a great platform to showcase a uh, genuine family business, I think that needs to be expressed more. There are plenty of black owned companies, especially restaurants, and they are thriving. They're doing very well. And I feel like it gives people inspiration to want to do the same thing theirself. I know that running a restaurant is extremely hard and is one of the number one ways to go bankrupt because it is such a hard establishment to run because they're a dime a dozen. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that dream to do this, especially that are black. And it seems a little far fetched. But when you see people like Robbie Montgomery and her family, it just gives you Not hope. to mention that Robbie was also an Ike et, which again is a part of history. She was around and singing background for Ike and Tina Turner, which is a legacy within itself. Ike and Tina definitely changed music and I feel like Robbie definitely changed food. I think it's also a great thing of Robbie being in her 70s and still looking for love. I think that is a beautiful thing. A lot of people, when they get older, they get set in their ways to where they feel like they can't look for love anymore or their time has passed. And Robbie is giving people an inside view to where never give up on love, always go after it. It doesn't matter how old you are. And I think that that is also a beautiful thing. Also, I would like to pinpoint Janae from the show, Welcome to Sweetie Pies. Janae was Tim Norman's fiance in the first couple seasons. And then all of a sudden she kind of just disappeared. Disappeared without disappearing, I should say. Janae and Robbie seemed to get along famously. They had a good relationship. They would talk to one another. Robbie had a great relationship with her grandchildren, both of her grandsons. She loves and adores them. So it was kind of weird when Janae just kind of disappeared. And after Janae left the show, there was a bunch of allegations that were being spewed, but it was being spewed from both ends. Robbie, basically the front runner of the show, she came forward on social media and stated how she missed her grandsons and how they didn't have a relationship anymore and that allegedly Janae, the mother, was keeping her children away from their grandmother. And Janae stated that that was completely false to a certain degree, meaning that no, she wasn't around them how she used to be, especially when her and Tim were in a relationship. But y'all still see the kids. Don't make it seem as if y'all don't y'all don't know what they look like anymore. You haven't seen them in years and stuff like that. No, you've seen them. You just don't see them like you used to because obviously we're not together anymore. So it's not a package deal. It's a separate package now. But Janae also threw out some allegations against Tim Norman that kind of shocked people. Everybody but Sean Davyway. Let's get into Janae and Robbie's relationship after her exit from Sweetie Pies. Article from CleoTV.com. Y'all remember Miss Robbie from Welcome to Sweetie Pies? We watched her not only run a successful restaurant with multiple locations, we also saw the family's dynamic between Miss Robbie and her son, Tim Norman. At the beginning of the show's airing on Owned, Norman had a child, Timmy, with his longtime girlfriend, Janae. The two had another son, AJ, afterwards, but sadly, the relationship didn't work out. We weren't privy to everything that went on with the dissolution of their union, but the drama is coming to the surface. Miss Robbie recently took to her Instagram and accused Janae of keeping her son's side of the family away from Timmy. Side note, so when Tim and Janae broke up, nobody really knew the backstory and what happened. Even on the seasons, it was kind of talked about a little bit, but it was definitely hopped and skipped over. It was acknowledged that Tim and Janae were no longer together and that they were going to keep co-parenting. But other than that, there was really no news. It kind of just, they were here together one moment as a family. And then you look up on the season next and it's just kind of Tim solo by himself with his mom once again. So again, a lot of information was not displayed on why they broke up, but 
it definitely came to the surface. So let's continue. In her Instagram post celebrating Timmy's ninth birthday, Miss Robbie said, happy birthday, Timmy. Grandma loves you even though I can't see you. Your daddy's side of the family misses you and one day we'll see you. In her in a video talking to her IG followers, Miss Robbie said, you all are right. Grandparents do have rights and I'm going to make sure I get mine. I'm a fighter, not a quitter, and I'll go all the way. Side note, I feel that there's a lot of red flags that have been ignored when it comes to Tim Norman and his mother, Robbie. Robbie is definitely one of the worst enablers I have ever seen before in my life. Now, I do respect her and I do have love for Miss Robbie, but at the same time, Miss Robbie, this is none of your business. If your son's side of the family, which includes you, are not seeing your grandchildren, that is your son's problem. That has nothing to do with you. If your son is not seeing his kids, Miss Robbie, and he don't have a problem not seeing them, he don't have a problem and not going to get them so that you can spend quality time with them as a grandparent, then you should fall back because that's the only way that you're going to be able to CC your grandkids is if your son would have did something about it instead of running around doing the things that he was doing, being with other women and all of that stuff. He could have cared less about his children. You love those kids, it seems more than he did because you're willing to go to court and fight for your rights as a grandparent when he should have been in court fighting for his rights as a father. So there you go again, Miss Robbie, enabling your son to be the loser that he is now behind bars. I just don't like that. I feel like grandparents need to fall back. If the your son and whoever the child is by or vice versa isn't letting certain things happen because they have custody, then it is your child's responsibility. You need to be in your kid's ear telling him, hey, you need to go to court. Let's go to court. I'll get all the information and stuff together. I'll have one of the assistants or something, get it together. But I miss my grandchildren and I know you miss them as a father. So we need to do something so that we can take care of this so that these kids can be back in our life. But instead, she's sitting here talking about some, oh, you all are right. Grandparents do have rights. Yeah, the rights that you have are through your children. If your kid don't have no rights to the child, neither do you. But moving right along. And they responded to Miss Robbie with some thoughts of her own about the family drama with the text message receipts and question and answer sessions with her followers. In the Instagram stories, Janae posted a text telling Robbie that both she and Tim were invited to her house to celebrate Timmy's birthday because they had already made plans to have a movie night. The two had other ideas in mind and declined the invitation. Over text messages, she wrote, fake ASS narrative to please your spirit. To be clear, both granny and sperm donor were invited over to my house. They declined. After that, Janae launched question and answer sessions she had been holding her tongue for nine years, trying to be the bigger person, but she's done with that. Side note, so Janae put up screenshots of text messages between her and Miss Robbie and screenshots of text messages between her and Tim Norman inviting them to her son's ninth birthday party. Now, the reason they couldn't come and pick her son up is because they had already made plans. So if you already make plans with your kid to do something for their birthday, you're not about to let somebody else come change all of that because they feel like they can. You cannot. We already have plans. You are more than welcome to come over here. Both of them were invited. They chose to decline. Now, if Miss Robbie missed her grandbaby so much, why not just go over there? If... Tim missed his sons so much. Why not just go over there? I don't care if it's uncomfortable. This is about my kid. This isn't about her or, you know, anybody else besides my child. So again, I agree with Janae when she says that Miss Robbie was just trying to create a fake narrative to please her spirit. Meaning you're just trying to make it look like to your followers and people like that, that I'm withholding these kids from you because when you are invited to be around them, you choose to decline. So don't try to make up for being not present in their lives by trying to make it look like I'm keeping you away. Since people haven't seen pictures of you and my kids and, you know, stuff like that. Oh, the reason you haven't seen 
seeing me around my grandkids is because their mom won't let me know. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Y'all just want them how y'all want them. Like, no, their mother has a schedule with them. She's a good mother. And y'all don't just get to come through and just change things, especially when y'all not spending the time anyway. So don't try to excuse your bad behavior and not seeing your grandchildren on, oh, the mom won't let me. The lies, but let's keep going. First question in Janae's Q&A session was, was Tim abusive? I saw signs on that show that seemed as though he possibly was. Janae responded, yep, I should have left then. Side note, so that is Janae stating that Tim Norman put his hands on her and often it wasn't something that just happened one time. And the reason I state that Let's keep going with this Q&A session. Someone asked about her relationship with Miss Robbie. Janae said they were good until recently. So good that her boys were at her house two weeks ago. Then she shared their text correspondence. Another person asked if Tim spends time with his sons. Janae said he hadn't been there in the past four years. Janae also claimed that she does not receive child support from Tim. In the midst of all of this, Janae must have accused Tim of running Miss Robbie's account and she vehemently denied those claims. Robbie's response, Tim is not running my own account. I know how to post. This is what she said. I don't have anything to do with her and Tim. Tim ain't thinking about her. That's the problem. Side note, this is what I mean by Miss Robbie needing to mind her business. This was about Tim running your account allegedly. This has nothing to do with his relationship with Janae. So for her to say, Tim ain't even thinking about her, that's the problem. What does that have to do with you, Miss Robbie? Again, you just said that you don't have anything to do with the relationship, then why do you keep speaking on it? It's like, shut the hell up already. Like, girl, are you dating Tim or is he your son? Because the enabling is gross. Tim is not taking care of his sons. He's not paying child support for his sons or anything like that. And this is all before Tim went to prison. So it's like, girl, why not talk to your son? Why not get on your son about the things that he is not doing for his children instead of trying to shave the mother? Because if you come from me or my children about me, my kids can't come around you. I don't want my children around. You're not going to be bad mouthing me or nothing like that around my kids. That's not what they're over there for. Children don't like to hear people say negative things about their parents. They do not like it. So to you, you may not like her, but to these kids, they'll do anything for her, including defend her. So why even place your grandchildren in that type of situation to where you're bad mouthing and saying certain things about their mother? Why would their mother? I wouldn't want my kids around you either. Like I absolutely would not. Who knows what you're going to say after I drop them off. If my name get brought up, who knows what you're going to say. So with Janae keeping her kids real close, I don't blame her. And with the energy of Tim, look at what Tim did to his own nephew putting insurance policies on him and whatnot. You don't think he's capable of the same thing when it comes to his children? I mean, we should love and honor our family the same. After Miss Robbie responded to Janae and stated that basically this whole thing stemmed is because Janae is bitter that Tim is not thinking about her in a romantic way. She wants Tim romantically, but Tim does not want her. Janae came into that comment section and stated and told the people in the chat that she is a happily married woman. Meaning, this has nothing to do with me wanting Tim romantically in that way, shape, or form. If so, why am I married? Why have I moved on if I am so pressed about her son? If I wanted him, I could have him. The man I want, I'm married to. So you're going to have to come up with a new false narrative about me, sweetie. You're gonna have to figure something out, uh, Miss Robbie, because this is not it. Robbie later came to her senses and said, you know, I decided I'm not going to stoop to nobody else's level. It's all about money. And I know I've spent a lot on TJ. So if it ain't about money, what is it about? Every mother wants their child to be with their father. So what's the problem? It's got to be about money and the cameras ain't rolling. So you need to get off of it. This is my last post. I'm not posting no more about this. I'll see her in court. Bye bye. As a grandparent, all you have to do is spend time. Some grandparents pick up their grandkids and just take them to the park and then drop them back off. Some grandparents pick up their grandkids and take them on the shopping spree. All that matters is that you spend 
time because that's all you owe your grandchild is time and wisdom. You don't owe them anything else. So again, this isn't your business. Get out of it. It's like she's always defending Tim like a wife, not like a mother, like a wife. And it's very annoying for her to say, if it's not about money, what is it about? If you were in the relationship, you know. Case in point, let's move on to the next part of this article on Clio TV to state reasons why mothers do not want their kids around the father. Back on Janae's page, someone provided an eyewitness account to Tim abusing her in New York. The person wrote, hi there. I know I've never said anything to you, but if you ever need an eyewitness to Tim's abuse, my friends and I have your back. You don't know us, but we were outside of Soho that night. Tim grabbed you and threw you on the car. I don't know who you were with, but they kind of just stood by. So my friends and I ran over to pull him off of you. Then Tim got in his car and drove off. You were in such shock. I am so sorry that happened to you. We have not really talked about it or made it public in any way out of respect for you. But I just saw your post about this abuse and we want you to know we can vouch for you 200%. But yeah, if you need us to back you up anytime, we got you for sure. Lastly, another person Asked why Robbie didn't have the similar energy for her deadbeat of a son of hers. Jenna replied and stated to the person, a mother's love, it's okay, God always works things out. Answer Miss Robbie's question earlier when she stated, what is it about? It has to be about money or it could be about your son, Tim, putting his hands on this woman, Janae. If there are eyewitness accounts stating that they saw certain things that he did to her, putting his hands on her, throwing her onto vehicles and whatnot in Soho, and people willing to testify on her behalf to state, I am an eyewitness count to this happening. If Tim will do that in public, imagine what he'll do to a woman behind closed doors. And instead of you being worried about your son being a good father to his children and not out here putting his hands on women, you taking it out on the mother instead. Again, you were wondering why he can't see his children like that or be around his children like that, although he doesn't care because he's not coming forward complaining about not seeing his children. You are. So that answers your question. The difference of the energy that is now is that she was in a DV relationship. When she got away from him, seeing the certain things that he'll do to her, she can only imagine what he may do to one of his children, especially if he is upset and she is no longer around to be the punching bag. So that is a big reason into why mothers, especially that have been violated by these men out here, Keep their children away. It does not matter if the man never placed his hands on the child. It could have been the reason you're not doing that is because you're putting your hands on me. But if you remove me as the element, as the source of where all of that vile energy is going to go, you will not place that on my children. And with me not being around, there is no guarantee. So you can still see them because you have not hurt them, but it's going to be in more so of a way to that works for me. So that I am not too far from my children if anything happens. But instead of Miss Robbie trying to see what's going on since she's so nosy and act like she know everything, she just enables instead of deal with the problem at hand. Help her son heal and or deal with what he has going on on the inside. He's not going to show you that side, Miss Robbie, because again, you were not a part of the relationship. It's called behind closed doors. Why would he do something at your house that he could wish to just do when he gets home to his, to where he runs it, to where nobody tells him what to do? So mind your P's and Q's. But let's keep going, guys. Norman is let in on what's going on on social media between his ex, Janae, and his mother, Robbie. So he comes forward with his side. Let's get into that. Shout out to the Jasmine brand. Welcome to Sweetie Pies. Tim Norman lashes out at X and claims she had sex with a member of the production crew. Let's get into Tim it. Tim Norman is now speaking out in response to the ongoing drama between his mother, Welcome to Sweetie Pies, Miss Robbie, and his ex-girlfriend, Janae Wallach, over allegations that his ex is not allowing his mother to see their shared sons, Timmy and AJ. This public dispute began when Miss Robbie posted a photo on Instagram June 22nd, wishing her grandson a happy birthday, followed by a three-part video series where she said she would fight for her rights to see little Timmy. 
This resulted in Tim Norman's ex Janae responding with her own account of the story in a series of Instagram posts and screenshot messages between herself and Miss Robbie. Her allegations include the claims that Tim is a deadbeat dad and had been abusive to her in the past. Now Tim Norman is addressing the dispute and he responds to some of Janae's allegations. He begins with saying he would never disrespect his son's mother, but continued on to say now he has to defend himself. Tim Norman claims that the last time he spent with his son was when he dropped Timmy back off at home. Janae allegedly had the police there waiting for him. He states, Tim's quote, you had the police waiting on me in the backyard when I was coming to drop my baby off. You set me up. You don't do that to no black man. Side note, you don't set up a black man, yet Tim set up his own black nephew, Andre Montgomery. Okay, so you don't set up black men, but you literally, in no pun intended, set up your nephew, a black man. You really have to pay attention to the words that these people say so you can see how hypocritical they were and all of the flags that were being missed. But let's continue. He began responding to the allegations that he is a deadbeat dad. Tim claims that he purchased a number of expensive cars, furniture, and a home and clothes. But here's his quote. I ain't working no more. Tim continued, I'm not on TV. I don't have an image to protect. I'm not getting a TV check. I don't have to answer to own. As he continues spewing allegations towards Janae, Tim goes on to claim that the reason he left her was that she slept with the cameraman on their production crew. Though he claimed to not have any ill will words towards the man she allegedly had relations with. He stated, you was with the boss when you slept with the help. So that's why I left you in the first place. Couple of things to pay attention to. Tim is responding to the allegations that were being made on Janae's lives and in her Q&A chat. He never states that he's not a deadbeat dad. All he states is that I'm not on TV anymore. I'm not getting a check. I don't have an image to protect, blah, blah, blah. With that being said, he's not saying I do take care of my kids. I do take care of my sons. I do this. I do that. I just did this. I just sent that. He's not denying that he's not taking care of his kids. Why that wasn't a problem for people, I don't know. But he did state, you know, hey, I'm not on TV anymore. That doesn't mean that you're taking care of your kids. If anything, you're letting us know that you're unemployed. And that's the reason why I'm not taking care of my kids. But again, he didn't deny it. So he states that Janae was sleeping with a cameraman, yet he doesn't have any ill willed words towards the cameraman, which is weird. If a cameraman, which he's calling the help, slept with my fiance, that's gonna be a whole problem. It would have been more than words. A lot of things would have went down if that would have happened with me, you sleeping with someone that I love, someone that I care for, someone I have children with, someone that I built a family with a core. That's gonna be a problem for most men, but to Tim, it's not a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem, Tim, because it didn't happen. You don't have any receipts or proof stating anything like this. Nobody else has stated anything from the cast or crew or your mother even, that Janae did anything with a cameraman. To me, that was a complete total lie. All Tim had was excuses. Excuse this, excuse that, but I'm still a man. Don't set up a black man. You don't set the, a black man up with the police and all of that. Why were the police there? Why didn't you get into that? What happened? Yeah, we didn't think so, Tim. But moving right along. So again, Janae, as far as I'm concerned, she didn't do anything with the cameraman or anything like that. There is no receipts. There is no proof. It's literally just an allegation from Tim. But let's move on. We will now drift into Andre Montgomery. Andre Montgomery is Robbie Montgomery's eldest grandson by her older son who passed away not too long after Andre Jr. was born. He was struggling in school down in Texas where he lived with his mother, so she decided to send him to his other side of the family and hopefully things there would be better in St. Louis, which they were. They were so good to Andre actually graduated from high school, picked himself up, got his grades up, and graduated from high school, and he was also pursuing a career in music, among other things. So he was definitely the bad child gone good and a lot of people really appreciated him. He was a big part of the show. They thought he was funny dancing in his chicken suit and pushing more people to try to come into the company and whatnot. So he was liked, he very so much was. So it was sad when the situation happened between he and his uncle, 
Tim Norman. But before we drift into that, which will be more so in part two, let's get into where all of this friction between Andre and his uncle started. Everyone, which they're entitled to, has their opinions on why Tim Norman had a weird relationship with his nephew Andre. Some stated that they just felt that Tim was jealous of the young man because of the relationship he was building with Robbie. And, you know, Tim is a spoiled kid, you know, at this point he's the only kid because his older brother passed away a long time ago so it's always kind of just been him and his mom you know type of situation so he's been really spoiled by that and with him being really spoiled by that some people state that tim was envious of andre because with him coming there and building the closer relationship could also place him up for inheritance so that certain things that Tim just thought he was going to inherit automatically because of him being the closest to his mother that now with Andre being in the picture building this relationship he could now be placed to get certain things before myself so there was plenty of reasons to where there could have been friction because remember Andre lived in Texas, so the relationship that he had with his grandmother was not close. Him moving to St. Louis right underneath her thumb makes it so that things can change permanently. My opinion, I feel that the relationship changed between nephew and uncle is when Andre moved from Texas to St. Louis. Again, he was far away, so out of sight, out of mind. Now that he's close, he's going to be on these people's mind, especially Tim's mother. So I believe that Tim was orchestrating Andre's downfall from the day he landed in St. Louis, honestly. And I'm going to tell you why. Let's get into it. Andre did not leave the show Welcome to Sweetie Pies. He was actually removed. Own removed him because they felt due to his image that he wasn't good for the show. So they fired him, terminated him, however you want to look at it. Why that happened? Why they felt he was bad for their image? It's because Andre was online smoking marijuana and also was being placed where there were GUNs. Not like in a literal sense, more so just like pictures and stuff like that. Knowing Andre, he was big into hip hop. He was pursuing that career. And you're gonna see a lot of those things in hip hop is just a part of the culture. That being said, certain photos were sent to the network of owned and they decided to fire him. I believe in my honest opinion that Tim Norman sent owned those pictures that Tim Norman did everything in his power to get Andre removed from the show out of sight out of mind especially with the plans that he had for Andre's future which was for Andre to have no future you have to get rid of someone that is constantly seen if you're going to do something like what Tim does in the future which we're going to get to happen to Andre if he's consistently on the show and then all of a sudden he is slain in St. Louis that's all people are going to talk about so it's better to get him off the show so he's more so of out of sight out of mind so it's not that big of a deal so that too much attention does not come to this because again he was going to be the reason it happened he was the responsible party of Andre's life ending that's just my opinion I feel that Tim got Andre fired. The second thing that Tim did that I started to side eye and feel like he was definitely after Andre was that he got him removed from the show. Now it's time to remove him from the family. And what he decided to do was set his own mother up to be robbed. In my opinion, I believe that when Miss Robbie was robbed of over $200,000 of money and items and what jewelry and all that good stuff, I believe that Tim set that up. What did he do to his nephew? Think about it. How did he set his nephew up? Who did he hire for him to do his bidding? Why would he do the same thing here? I feel that, in my honest opinion again, that Tim hired some people to go and rob his mother for him, absolutely, so that he could blame it on his nephew. That is how I feel. Let's get into it. Sweetie Pie's Andre Montgomery told police he believed Tim Norman was responsible for the burglary before Norman allegedly conspired to K-I-L-L him. The alleged murder for hire plot that involves Sweetie Pie star Tim Norman against his own nephew, Andre Montgomery, gets crazier with time. Aside from a smiling mugshot, the former reality TV star is remaining mum on the ordeal. Recently released police files allege Montgomery named Norman as a suspect in a home burglary of his grandmother. 
who is also Norman's mother. Police say Andre Montgomery suspected Tim Norman of a robbery on grandmother's home. The aftermath of Miss Robbie's home burglary was documented for the series. According to police files related to the case, Montgomery was a prime suspect in the burglary. The St. Louis Dispatch Post reports on police findings. During the burglary, Miss Robbie's life savings and retirement funds were stolen. Montgomery lived with Miss Robbie on and off for several years. Prior to the burglary, Montgomery was getting into trouble for marijuana use. He also posted images to his social media accounts that own executives felt promoted gun violence. As a result, he no longer appeared on the show. Side note, Tim Norman cannot convince me that he did not send those pictures and whatnot to own and say, I feel like he should be gone, blah, blah, blah. On top of that, Miss Robbie's life savings and retirement funds were stolen during this robbery. To me, that's not information that Andre, especially as young as he was, would have had. That's information that Tim Norman would have had. So for those two things to be stolen, for the burglars to know to go and get those things, the life savings and the retirement funds, there is no reason that I don't believe that that information was personally given. That's not something that those robbers stumbled upon during the burglary. That's something that they went in there to get, something that they were told to go and get. They knew exactly where they were located. Tim Norman cannot convince me that he did not give those robbers that information. Again, Andre did not know that information. I also believe that that's why Andre feels that his uncle did it because of said information. Only my uncle knows that stuff. Only my uncle knows where those things were. I wasn't even near, I wasn't there. He did this. I know that he did this because he has been coming for me for a while. You can feel when somebody doesn't like you. You can feel when somebody doesn't want to be around you. You hear things. So I feel that he heard the rumors from his other family members and stuff like that, that Tim was not feeling Andre. So that's another reason for Andre to be standoffish to Tim and for Tim to be standoffish to Andre. So I believe Andre, when Andre stated that Tim set up this burglary, it is in Tim's character. If he was setting up what he set up with Andre, Andre stating he's after me and he really was, why would he have been lying about this burglary? Tim set up this burglary for Andre to be isolated from his mother so that his mother could feel like I cannot trust you or anything like that. So if he was in any will or anything like that, I'm taking him out. He ain't coming back into none of my homes or anything like that. I don't want anything to do with him type of situation when her son was behind it the whole time. She does not feel like Tim can do any wrong. She looks at Tim as perfect, her child that does nothing wrong. Meaning when it's brought to Robbie's attention that Tim could have or is the person that burglarized her home, she's gonna go to, oh no, he'd never do that. That's my son, I love him, he loves me. He knows that I give him the world, I give him anything. Why would he do that when what's mine is his instead of just hearing the person out? Because if Robbie's willing to consider her grandson Andre as being the person that did it, why wouldn't she be willing to consider her son? It had to have been somebody close to you due to the things that were taken. Andre states out of his own mouth that his uncle did it and not just because he felt like his uncle was coming after him. In order for Andre to be the prime suspect with the police having no proof, just hearsay, means that somebody told the police that it was Andre. That's what made him the prime suspect. How can Andre be the prime suspect if he is in Texas? He was in Texas when this situation happened, which we're gonna get into. Andre even came back to St. Louis for questioning by the police and he also took a lie detector test. So if he's willing to do these things and cooperate, then why would he have done them? Andre's feeling like if I didn't do this, which I know I didn't do it, it was Tim Norman. I hope you all enjoyed part one. We will be back with part two. Please let me know your comments underneath the video. If there's anything that I didn't discuss in part one that you think I should bring up in part two, let me know and we will definitely do that. I love you all. Until the next video, bye.